G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here with how to build the ultimate storage. By now I have a fair amount of experience with storage tech. From very simple item sorters, to entire main storage systems capable of storing every item in the game. In fact, I have a playlist containing all of my storage tech videos, so check that out if you want to catch up. In this video, I want to go through all the steps needed to design a fully functioning main storage for 117. But before we can begin, we need to establish what parameters we require from our storage system. We can begin with the very first storage system I ever interacted with. This is the storage system from El Mango Skyblock server. It's a rather ambitious concept designed by El Mango and Skyrising. I call it ambitious because they spent a lot of time picking out the perfect item layout for 1.15. As you can see, we have shulker box displays and chests for full shulker boxes for items that we need large storage for combined with simple chests of items that we don't need as much storage for. And this kind of storage layout works remarkably well. That is, until your access to resources change. You see, the problem with this storage layout is that way too much thought was put into it and it's simply way too efficient. Because everything is so tightly packed together, there is simply no room to add additional storage slots for new items. And a good example for when things may change is when we finished our brand new creeper farm that produced enormous amounts of gunpowder. Gunpowder was originally stored right here where we're storing the bone mill. However, gunpowder was needed very often for crafting large amounts of TNT. Due to how everything was tied together in the storage, it simply was not possible to make a new shulker box storage slice for the gunpowder. So we simply had to substitute it for the bone mill slice. And then of course what happens when the bone mill starts to fill up? Well, we're kind of stuffed aren't we? So what we learned from this storage system is that a main storage has to be flexible and expandable. Our next step brings us to the main storage that I designed from my video of how to kill a chest monster. This main storage is extremely flexible and extremely expandable simply because I use exactly the same storage slice for every single item. But then the problem with this storage is that it's vastly over engineered. The item sorter can sort every single individual item in the game independently. Meaning that if this storage is sorting all 736 items at the same time, it can sort up to 6.5 million items per hour. And the storage halls are absolutely enormous. Allocating box storage to useless items such as wooden bowls and paintings. Who's ever going to need box storage for these items? And then there's the latest design for El Mango's Patreon server. Which by the way, me along with a bunch of other people on the Patreon server had to design and rebuild twice. Because the previous design before this one was a predecessor of How to Kill a Chess Monster which was over engineered and also flawed. This storage concept shortens the halls immensely by putting all of those useless items into double chests in the ceiling. We've also scaled back the item sorting immensely using my encoded parallel entity item sorter which can sort at most 180,000 items per hour. And while I'm still not quite satisfied with this storage concept, I definitely feel like we're getting closer to the ultimate main storage. But let's go through our parameters one more time. We want our storage to be flexible and expandable. This means we want one standardized storage slice to build the entire storage. We also need it to be reliable and easy to fix if something goes wrong. Because of course, a main storage is supposed to reduce the stress on the player, not increase it. We also want to sort items quickly and efficiently. This is because it's inconvenient if the storage takes hours to sort items or causes an enormous amount of lag while doing so. And finally, we want to refine everything that we design to be relatively simple to build and comprehend. Now that we've established all of our parameters, we can get to the very first step of organizing 
our item layout. To begin with, all of our items are split into two categories. The box category and the chest category. This is because we want to be efficient. The way in which I decided which items to put in each category is by using Skyrising's inventory scanner, which you can find a link for down in the description. In order to use the program, you want to create a folder. Call it inventory scanner. In this folder, we will have the actual program itself that you can download from Skyrising. A folder named out, along with a world folder. In this case, I'm using the seventh series of Hermitcraft. You'll want to hold down shift and right click and select open PowerShell window here. You'll then want to use the following command. For the output folder, we will want the folder named out. For the world folder, we of course want Hermitcraft 7. If I hit enter, it'll now run the program, and once it's finished, you can then close the PowerShell window, open the folder named out, and you will have all of these Excel files. If you go into the file name count, you then obtain the total number of each item in the game found in that world file. So if I just go to data, sort, I want to sort by total, largest to smallest, and we can see that the most common item types on the Hermitcraft server in Season 7 were stone, cobblestone, and bamboo. You will then want to locate the point at which the items cross over the number 3456, as this is the capacity of a single double chest. From this list we can see that this point for the Hermitcraft server was around purple blocks. You will then want to select all of these items and go through them one by one, picking them up into the box category if you ever think you will need to store a large amount of that item. For this particular item layout, I actually use statistics from a whole bunch of technical Minecraft servers in order to produce the category lists. I then handed off these lists to some members of our Manga's Patreon server, and they put in a mad amount of effort to produce the item layout that you can see underneath. On top, I've simply layered on all the new items in 117, in the approximate locations where they should be stored. I then copied this entire layout over to here and shifted everything around until it fit in perfectly. So I have to congratulate these guys as they made an absolutely amazing layout that makes so much sense to use. And in case you're wondering what we're going to do about all the copper block variants, I've got a special case in mind where they'll all go to their own multi-item sorter. In case you're wondering why these coloured glass regions extend beyond the actual items, just notice that I hadn't fully assigned small drip leaf. My plan is for each pair of rows to be a single storage hall, and each hall will be 64 blocks long and have additional redundant storage spaces. This will make the storage system flexible and expandable for when new items get added later on. Alright, two hours later, I've gone through every single item and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. This will be useful later on for setting up the item filters using Freegion Storage Tech Aid. And now I've got the item layout properly sussed out, time to get onto the storage slices. Now for this step, you can go ahead and use whatever storage slice you want. But of course, I'm going to go ahead and design my own slice. I spent hours upon hours refining the concept of what I believed was the ultimate storage slice. However, this of course should be taken with a grain of salt. This may be the ultimate storage slice for me, but it may not necessarily be the ultimate storage slice for you. There are a couple of reasons why it's the best in my opinion. First of all, there's only one, two, three, four unlocked hoppers or eight if you include the other side in this entire slice. Second of all, we're using a special kind of item filter 
which can pull in either 14, 16 stackables at once, or 62, 64 stackables at once. Furthermore, we've also got double speed item sorting for the box items, meaning we can actually load these boxes at two times hopper speed while having them accessible from the storage slice. We've also got the same thing, but for single hopper speed sorters for our chest items. And you might notice that we're doing something rather unique here and using water in the middle of the storage to give the player access to both the box items at the top here as well as the chest items below. And the idea is that you can capture some dolphins and stick them at the top here in order to give yourself dolphins grace while swimming in the central water column. It would essentially be like flying with an elytra without rockets or running into things and dying. Minimizing the amount of unlocked hoppers, maximizing the amount of items that can be collected in a single item entity, and separating our box type items from the chest type items, meaning they can be sorted separately and more efficiently, allows us to get the best compromise of all of these parameters. And now our next step will be to take our selected storage slice and tile it into a full storage system. And with that, you can clearly see the benefit of using a single standardized storage slice for the entire storage, as all you need to do is simply copy it multiple times. All I've done in the middle here, it's connected up all the item conduits between the different storage halls. These conduits are like the main arteries of our storage system. At the very top here, we have the box type items that go to the item sorters. Next down, we have these hopper lines, which will carry empty shulker boxes to all of our shulker box loaders. These conduits right here are quite unique in that they carry the overflow from each storage slice to the bulk. If for example one of these slices was completely full of boxes, let's say it's for a very common item like stone, any excess will come out of these droppers into this pathway, which we can then send that automatically to an additional bulk system. That way we do not lose any items just because a storage slice is full. You may also notice a little dolphin friends here. Let me demonstrate for you quickly what it's like using an underwater storage. In the water, you can go into swimming mode. And as you can see with Dolphin's Grace, you can move through the storage very quickly. And you can exit anywhere, collect items, go back into the water stream, and out you go. However, with a lot less dying of full damage because your storage is actually incomplete. So what's next is to actually add an interior for all of this. A few hours of unleashing my inner builder, and it looks nice I guess, but it does feel a little cramped. If I was to redo this, I'd probably make the holes a little further apart. Also that's a bit cursed. So of course in the middle we have our conduit which actually provides us with additional speed and also night vision, making the underwater environment much more visible. This of course will make locating items a lot easier. Also, the conduit allows for fun games such as threading the eye of the needle. Damn it, I missed it. Let's go, third time's a charm. Hey, nailed it. So if we take a quick recap, we've already established our item layout. We've chosen a standard storage slice. We've also built it out into a full storage system. Now time to add our item sorting. And for this, I will of course be using my encoded multi-item sorter. This one performs a very similar function to the one that I designed for Patreon main storage. However, this one has been very well optimized with a few more improvements. If you aren't quite sure what my encoded multi-item sorter is, go check out the video about it where I go through the entire design process. To start with, the first 10 slices of the multi-item sorter have been dedicated to box items. And in order to unload the boxes, we are of course using this amazing first item type unloader invented by Boyan. The unloaders for these first 10 slices have actually been linked together. This is because our box items can be sorted at two times hopper speed. 
Meaning, if I link two slices together like this, and put in two boxes, we'll actually place down both boxes and unload them both simultaneously. We have another eight slices then dedicated to our chest items. These are all isolated to ensure that each one of our chest items is only unloaded at hopper speed. This is because our chest items represent a much smaller proportion of our sorting loads and it's much easier to use a single speed sorter for these items. Because for the double speed sorter to work, you need to have two reference items up here in the first slot, but also you need to have this hopper completely full. However, the idea is that our chest items are not as common as our box items, meaning it would be kind of pointless if our item filter required an enormous amount of an item that we don't have a lot of anyway. Once again, we are invoking the parameters that we set at the start of the build. One issue that we can commonly get with these double speed item sorters is that because this hopper is also pushing items, it is continuously being put into an 8 game tick cooldown. This means if the item entity arrives anywhere between the 8 game tick interval, it will not be reliably collected. By perfectly aligning the items before sending them to the item sorter, we make absolutely sure that the item arrives at the original 8 game tick interval in which the sorter started. You may also notice that we use different alignments for our box items and our chest items. This allows us to separate the chest items from the box items and send them in a different water stream. So you might be wondering, we have 10 slices dedicated to box items, 8 slices dedicated to chest items, but what are these last two slices for? Well these are reserved for special cases. In this slice we have all of our copper block variants. In this very last one, we have every single 16 stackable. The reason why we want to separate the 16 stackables is because they need a unique timing for their stack size. Item entity stacking is an important optimization to ensure that multiple different item entities of the same item type can actually stack together and create fewer item entities in total. This means by ensuring that we stack the item entities together into the largest stack size possible, we can minimize the amount of item lag created by our storage system while it is sorting items. What we have here is an 8 game tick clock which is initialized when the parallel entity item sorter starts receiving boxes with items. This keeps everything in the storage in sync with the 8 game tick interval of a hopper. We then have this counter which counts to exactly 10 before sending out a signal. Every time we count to 10, we will then dispatch a stack of 10 16 stackables. And as you can see, every single time we get exactly 10 16 stackables. So that's all of the 16 stackables dealt with. If we now go ahead and look at a chest item, every 10 cycles, our signal from the 10 times counter goes to an additional 3 times counter. The signal from this counter then makes its way to a 2 times counter. So if we do the maths, we have 10 times 3 times 2 gives us exactly 60. However, because our box items can be sorted at double hopper speed, for the box items specifically, we bypass a binary counter and feed it straight off the 3 times counter. If I go ahead and put a single box of a box type item, we end up stacking it to exactly 30. But if I go ahead and put in another box so that we're now sorting at 2 times hopper speed, and now stacks to 60. So what all of this means is that we are always minimizing the amount of item entities in our storage. And of course, unstackables as well as items with custom MBT data that aren't encoded in our slices will go to the overflow slice, which will take out the items and stack them up into boxes. So what about the encoder chests? How do we decide what item goes in which chest? 
Well, the idea is that at any given time, you want to have multiple boxes being unloaded simultaneously. This means that you want to assign the items to the chests in a way that spreads out all of the most common items into separate categories. And the way that I did this was I took my two categories. I took the chest category and I took the box category and I used statistics from all of the servers that I collected data from in order to sort all the items in these categories from the most common all the way down to the least common. And then in order to fulfill the principle of the parallel entity item sorter, they want to make sure that the most common items are all separated, meaning we'll go through the list, assign stone to one slice, then assign cobblestone to a different slice, and then keep going back through the list until every item is assigned. Applying all of this, we obtain 10 separate lists where each list will be the contents of a chest in the encoded multi-item sorter. Using these lists, I can then implement Frigion Storage Tech Aid, which is an S Carpet app, and put these lists into this folder. In the game, I can then load the app using the following command, and it will give me these magic items. Now I've already introduced how the magic hoppers work, but Frigion the Mad Lad has added this additional chest which creates the item encoders from our list. It even gives us an error message when it doesn't successfully assign an item, meaning we can now grab this item from our inventory and assign it manually wherever. What an absolutely hectic app. So with all of our items assigned in the best possible configuration for our parallel entity item sorter, it's time to strap this onto the storage system and set up the item filters. All I need to do is select it with Lightmatica, line up the schematic with our storage input, and then paste it in. And then line up the water streams so that our box items go to the top and our chest items drop down to the item sorters at the bottom. We then feed the overflow from the box items back into the chest items because some of our 16 stackables are assigned to box storage while others are assigned to chest storage. A few hours later and we've got ourselves a little storage interface. In the middle here, I have a modification of Command Leo's crafting system as an input to the sorting system. The way that you use this, that you dump your inventory into the shulker box or you dump entire shulker boxes into this chest. Although I just realized I haven't actually connected it to the parallel entity item sorter yet. I've also gone ahead and added on this enormous empty box storage. A main storage such as this requires an enormous amount of shulker boxes. Fortunately in 117, there are certain ways in which we can get ourselves large amounts of shulker boxes. But fortunately, once you have the storage mostly filled up with shulker boxes, it also has this system above which automatically recycles the empty boxes. At the very top, we have a shulker box sorter, which will only work if you have the carpet rule stackable shulker boxes enabled. This is not a mechanic which makes the shulker boxes stackable in the sense that you can put them in a hopper and have them stacked together. The mechanic only works if the shulker boxes are in item form on the floor like so. Apart from this, for all intents and purposes, our shulker boxes will still behave as if they are an unstackable. If you don't have access to this feature, you can simply remove the shulker box sorter and just send all empty boxes directly to the empty box storage. This box sorter is only really useful for separating out discolored boxes like so. Just underneath the shulker box sorter, we've got this very handy shulker box stacker. So if I demonstrate what happens when it fills up, I just stack up all the boxes like so, and send them straight to the empty box storage. And then because hoppers can pull an entire item into here at once, they can in fact pull the whole stack in. But of course, the instant they start transferring the items out, they'll all unstack like so. And if the empty box storage is ever empty, 
This massive AND gate will activate this clock right here, notifying the player. In a moment, I'll be assigning all of the item filters. However, in the meantime, I still have a few conduits to set up. I also took a moment to add on one of my ultimate bulk systems for completeness. And my goodness, it's almost as big as the entire main storage. Now you can easily omit it for your own design if you don't need a massive bulk system like this. What's left to do now is assign all of our item filters. In order to set up Ferrigion Storage Tech Aid for item filters, I'm going to take each one of these lists and copy its contents, and then I'm going to access the script from the world file. Here it is, Storage Tech Aid. And right here, we want to put our list of items. So I'm just going to paste, remove the duplicate item, and remove this very last comma, like so. Now if I save the file and load the script, we of course get our magic hoppers, we have our item sorter, and then we have a full hopper for our double speed item sorter. So if I place down the full hopper, you can clearly see we get hoppers full of the items. I can also go ahead and place down the item sorter hopper on top. And in this configuration, we get a double speed item sorter with all of our items automatically assigned to the correct item filters. As you just saw, I think there was eggs. There we go. 16 stackables also automatically adjust the fill level of the hopper. So from in here, I can load the app. Make sure I have the full hopper selected first. I go right here and simply replace this hopper like so. And now we have those hoppers underneath. If I then go ahead, break this hopper, place it down like so. We should now see all of these item sorters properly assigned. Also, something that you should be aware of is that these comparators won't receive block updates because there is a block between it and the hopper. So in order to update the comparators, I'm just going to use world edit to replace them. There we go. Now we can see all these comparators are lit up and reading items. If I go along, I can find this is the point at which our items are no longer being assigned. So all I want to do is just remove these hoppers. So we don't get any random junk entering them. All right, I've just repeated the steps for all the storage halls. Now it's time to get on to the single speed sorters. Oh my goodness, after roughly 40 hours of storage tech, I can finally consider this main storage complete. We have installed our item sorter along with water pathways for the various edge cases and item types that we have to sort. We've got an ultimate bulk, We've gone and assigned all of our item filters, including our chest items down below, as well as placing down all of our display items in the storage halls. So now that everything is finally together, let's take this storage for a spin. Currently I have the item sorter disabled while having this lever turned on. What I'm going to do is place down all of these chests full of shulker boxes of items that I collected from the Hermitcraft server. I'm also going to go ahead and use Command Leo's item randomizer to fill the rest of the chest with random items from our storage. All I need to do is look at one of these chests and run the following command. And it will fill the chest with shulker boxes of randomized items that we're storing in our main storage. And just before we run the storage, let's take a look at what the lag is like. There we go. As you can see, the most amount of lag is coming from our hoppers. However, because most of them are locked, we're only getting 5.5 milliseconds worth of lag from them. In total, the storage is producing about 11 milliseconds of lag while idle. All right, let's switch on the item sorter. Click this lever, and hopefully it works straight out the bat. There we go, we've just assigned an item to one of the slices of our unloader. And it is a box type item. Let's have a look inside. Here it is. 
Ah, it seems that we have a problem already. Okay, it seems that every other slice is working. It's just this slice which is stuck. Let me remove this block. Ah, I think I know what the problem is. So that's a good point about troubleshooting in failure modes. What you just observed happening is a problem that can occur with the parallel entity item sorter if it is unloaded while it is running. So what you witness is in these hoppers, we had the incorrect fill level for these dummy items. This happens because if you unload the system while it's running, these repeaters get out of sync with these hoppers, and when it breaks the box, it can suck in the box, which causes issues with the signal strength of this redstone dust. Fortunately, it was quite an easy fix, as all we had to do is go through, find the hopper that was missing dummy items, and simply fill it back up to the correct level. This would probably be also be a good time to talk about other modes of failure for this sorter. If for any reason the minecart fails to return, like so, the system will automatically detect this and shut down. It will stop boxes from being placed so you don't lose any items, and also sound this alarm to notify the player. In this situation, all we really need to do is reset the alarm, like so. Find where the fault is, which is right here, and send the minecart back on its way. And now the system should be working perfectly fine again. A few minutes later, and you can clearly see the benefit of a parallel entity item sorter, as we are getting better utilization of our unloaders. So if we take a look at the items coming out, there they go. They all stack up on that truck door, and away they go. We check out the lag. Now look at that. We're getting only a 5.5 millisecond increase while the storage system is active. Now item entities are not even contributing 1 millisecond. Alright, now that the item sword is working perfectly fine, let's go ahead and tick warp it, and I'll get back to you all when it's finished. Here we are, the home stretch. The last few boxes are having their items sorted. And there we go. Finally done. Now clocked in a total sorting time of 15 hours and 38 minutes. And bear in mind, that was four and a half double chests of items from an actual survival server, followed by another eight double chests of shulker boxes of completely randomized items. And I should note, the Command Leo's item randomizer app is probably not ideal because it creates shulker boxes where each slot has a completely different item type and there is a random amount of items in each slot. This means that the amount of time that boxes spend being unloaded is very short compared to the amount of time that it takes to sort each box into each unloader. For the boxes that we obtained from Hermitcraft, we see the much more realistic case of items being either spread out a lot, or there being large amounts of a particular item in each box. In fact, it only took about 3 hours for it to clear out these first 4 chests. The rest of the time was spent unloading all the randomized items. And this makes perfect sense, because we use statistics from actual survival servers in order to optimize the parallel entity item sorter. And instead, if we use a computer algorithm to randomize the items perfectly, this is simply not a realistic case. If we look inside our storage, we can check out the unstackable sorting. I moved everything here so you can clearly see all the unstackables that were sorted. We also have all the different colours of shulker boxes along with renamed ones. In this side, we have all the items that weren't actually assigned in our encoder. If we look inside our storage halls, we can see that we've sorted pretty much every single item in the game. If we look down at our chest items, you can see that they are all neatly sorted. And we've even got some items with multiple boxes such as dirt. So there we have it! How to build the ultimate main storage. A main storage complex is a massive project that requires a lot of time and a lot of patience. And I'm glad that I could go through it with all of you. If you want to try out this main storage for yourself, I'll be leaving a world download down in the description. I'll also leave useful resources such as the item list, along with a ranking list of all the items and their quantities found across several servers. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you next time.